Hello, everybody. Now we want to welcome to the Jimmy Star Show the fabulously talented and super gorgeous Deborah Foreman. Hello, and welcome to the show. Hi. Thank you for having me. It's so much fun. So before we get started, let me introduce you to, first to my super cool, outrageous man about town co-host, Mr. Ron Russell. He lies a lot. <laughs> you're so, you sound like a little girl. You're so sweet. Uh, I sound like a little... That's not... Okay, so let me be using my deeper voice no, now. No, no. <laughs> sure, you sound like a girl. If I didn't see you, I would think you were a girl. She is a girl. I am a girl. She's a young lady. I said... Well, what, like Ted Pro okay. is old? Oh, no. Listen to her. <laughs> Listen, I bet you she could do Baby Snooks. Listen to her. Not that anybody knows who Baby Snooks is. Maybe because you know my age of 53, so you're assuming I should oh, act like a 53-year-old? How old are you? I'm 53. Go away. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> what? You know, it's fun to do Skype. You kind of can uh, do, you can play, can't you? <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, doggy. <laughs> Give me the name of your equipment, your camera equipment. Yeah, because he wants to know what kind of camera equipment you have that makes you look so fabulous so he can have it, I mean, too. <laughs> oh, uh, no, I don't have It's just my laptop. Bing! <laughs> you're, so, you're so girl-like. I, I, I'm fascinated by her already. Okay. She's girl-like. She's not, like, old womanish. That's that's good. Oh, I don't usually bring old womanish people on the show. No, but some some women at fifty are old women. You know, they look. I'm seventy six. Some men at wow. oh sure, wow. I'm another one like you. Some people yeah. seventy six are horrible. <laughs> you know, they they're just like old. You're amazing. I love. Okay, I love hold on. We have to like introduce you. you around. Okay, first we have the man behind the boards, Mr. Chad Murphy. Deborah is amazing. Welcome to the show. She am I hello, love hello. You, you can't see him. He's not on camera. You can just hear him. He's like behind the scenes. And then we have uh, we have a chat room full of people. So say hello to everybody in the chat room. Hi, chat room. <laughs> I, I want you to know too because like I I have a lot of people on t Twitter that follow me and. Uh, when we did the promo that you were coming on the show, I'm not kidding you, because we have, you know, everybody who comes on the show has a pretty great resume just like you do, but never have I ever gotten so many tweets and pr people like private messaging me, oh my God, I can't believe you have Deborah Foreman, she's like so hot, like she was my favorite when in the 80s she was like the hottest girl on the planet and, and all this stuff. She's so, still hot. I know she's still hot, but like, <laughs> you have some fan base, I have to tell you, because like never do I get that, you know, and we've had a lot, we have a lot of you know, pretty popular people, but never do I get, like, the fact that they were popular and, like, the hottest thing, like, ever. So I even got emails, like, oh, my gosh, like, this, what does she look like now? And I was like, oh, you know, I just look at her online, Google her. You can see what she looks like. She was gorgeous then. She's gorgeous now. What are you asking me for? Like, people are crazy. But you have, like, <laughs> crazy, like, supportive fans who really love everything that you've done. See, I, oh, I write articles about people like you and I because I firmly – my dearest friend, Perry Winkler, just turned 95. And she wears fishnet stockings and high heels and short skirts and does not look stupid or ridiculous or like Norma Desmond. She looks 50. This woman has jeans and she's gorgeous. Now, I tell people, the reason and the, the, or the how is think positive. This woman doesn't have one negative thought in her body. She eats well, she rests well, she exercises, and she's never been in a hospital, had a surgery, except for two children. And... It's amazing. So look at you. Look at me. We, we, we are really phenomenal people. And I, he doesn't include me in that because I look old for my age. <laughs> no, J Jimmy, Jimmy's still young. Jimmy's only 51. And men don't, men don't only show 53. it. She's 53. Women go faster than men, Jim. Oh, do they? Yes, most do certainly. Do you think women go faster than men? Absolutely. Age faster? Yes, yes absolutely. Hmm. I think it depends on if you've been, <laughs> this is going to sound really crazy, but if you've raised kids and and got married and you did everything that you were supposed to do in your 30s and 40s, I think you do age faster. I'm a late bloomer. So I, even though I did stuff in my 20s, I still feel that I've got so much more to do. But I didn't do those things. I didn't get married. I didn't have kids. I didn't have like that, that one career that I had to like put my head wrap my brain around. I had many. I've done a lot of things in my life so far. And there's more to come. <laughs> there's way more to come. Well, that's what counts. It's the joie de vivre. That's what keeps us going. Look at me, 76. I'm still working. It's retarded. 
I mean, uh -huh. curiosity. It's curiosity. We still want to learn. It's, there's I just a happy, you know, I, I think Goldie Hawn went on uh, some shows at one time and she said people are born with a happy gene. I think I was. And uh, my mom and I discussed it too. Because she, she was taught, because, you know, a lot's been going on in my life recently about the 80s in the sand and this is sort of resurgence of 80s. And I was talking to her recently and she said, even as a child, I was super positive. So it's just, it was already, it's already, it's in me. I don't have to like, you know, pull it out and I become that. It's, it's in my DNA. Did you ever have in your lifetime a doubt about anything? I never did. No. <laughs> I, broke my I, mean, I mean, if I said right now I was going to become a brain surgeon, <laughs> I mean, there'd be a little, you know, challenging to it. But no, nothing. nothing uh, everybody knows are my yeses. When I, when I was in my 50s, my mother used to say to me, Ronnie, when are you going to grow up? You're so stupid. You act like a kid. What's wrong with you? And I'd say, look at you. You did cartwheels down the street last year to show people you could still do cartwheels, and you're 70. You know, she was telling me I was stupid. Meanwhile, my mother, you know, if I had a party, my mother would come to the party. She'd say, put on the Dance of the Seven Veils, and my mother would do Vilma Banke from the silent movies. My mother was an actress. And she would do the dance of the seven veils for my friends. I mean, she was crazier than anybody. So it's what, it's what, yeah, it's what the mind tells you. I don't know age. I don't, no, I don't know wrinkles. And I don't you know don't look like you know age because you look absolutely gorgeous. Now, you said you were never married or you were married. No kids. No, never married. No kids. Good for you. I mean, yes, relationships. Yes. But yeah, yeah. Like my, like my daughters. They don't want to get married. My daughters just want boyfriends, travel, good times, and parties, and they, both of them are in the business, so they really, they, they <laughs> have a call to have a baby. They never really had a calling to be a mother, it's not, no. and they're not selfish. They just don't have the calling. So we, so we have to talk a little bit about a couple of things that are like. Oh, we're going to keep her on a long I time. I, I, I like know. I know. Keep her on. I have certain, She's not. First doing, of all, okay. You're not doing a ten-minute interview. Here's, here's something that I, I learned like today, you. though, that I didn't know. So She's I googled so you just to like to find different things that, and to see how many things I didn't know about you. Which a lot of the things I do know about you because I've seen all your films just about. Um, and, and I even went to your 80s on the sand, which we'll give a plug for that later on. And you can tell people how to find out and go to that and all that kind of stuff. And your web business and your jewelry business. We'll cover all of that, too, wow. after we talk your entertainment business. But I did not know. Like, there's this list. And you were in – I guess you were in – it's on IMDb. And it's the 100 greatest teen stars. And it's like the 100 greatest – it's like the who's who of, like, the 100 greatest teen stars, like, in the history of film. And you're one of them. Wow, that's sweet. I didn't know that. And I was like, oh my god, and there's like Tom Cruise is on there and like I mean like like it's a who's who of like Shirley Temple. I mean it's like a who's who of like people and like you're on this list and I was like, oh my gosh. Wow. Wow. The, I went down the whole list and like everybody in it like it, it, especially from the 80s like it, there's not a single person you don't really really know no Drew Barrymore. I mean it's like all these like, you know, great people and so I didn't know that. So number sure. one, we want to say congratulations about that. And then number two, we have to talk about Valley Girl a little. I'm sure you probably get tired of it, but Valley Girl was such a dope movie. He doesn't really like Nicolas Cage that much, but I love No, don't them. say that. <laughs> don't say that. Uh, I don't mind Nicolas Cage. I just don't think he's an actor. I, I find it he's very stressful when I watch him work. He feels uh, To me, it's like he's straining himself to do what he does, unlike... George Clooney or other actors She's worked with him too where it's natural you know Nicholas always looks like he's intense about well, I'm anything a, I'm a I'm an 80s kid you know I graduated high school in 82 and college in 86 and and Valley Girl was such a like iconic movie you know that's like our generation my generation movie that and like well, 16 Candles and, like, Breakfast Club and stuff like that. But Valley Girl is such a impactful movie. We actually had E.G. Daly on a couple of – I guess she goes by Elizabeth Daly now. E.G. Daly on a couple of weeks ago, and um, and she was fabulous. Like, she was such a great guest on the show. It got, it got like, I don't know, almost 2 million plays. And uh, she was super fabulous. And, and so just tell us something – maybe tell us something that we don't know. First of all, did you have fun doing Valley Girl? And then tell us something maybe that nobody knows about it. Huh. But nobody knows about it. I don't know. It's been sort of uh, dissected a lot. So I don't know if, it, if I can share anything that would be brand new to it. Other than I did have fun. You know, we came together as artists and we had uh, our intention was to do real authentic work and, and be as genuine as we possibly could. And we rehearsed and, um, 
and you know, there wasn't a lot of time to have for shenanigans on the set. We we were working from the moment we step on set until there was a wrap at night. You know, there was no time at all, ever. <laughs> you know, so we went from one location to the next. We shot the couple scenes or whatever. Only had a couple takes per scene, so it, there was it was a fast paced moving machine. And then, no time to think about anything. So if you had second thoughts, there was no time to have that. <laughs> you did. Uh, uh, when you uh, when you actually like did it, did you guys know going into it that it was going to become kind of like this like, iconic cult film that? That if you would still be watching, you know, here's like 30 years later, 40, almost 30, yeah, 80, 90, like almost 40 years later. <laughs> uh, 30, it was 30 year re anniversary a couple years ago, I think it was, yeah. Um, no, I had no idea, you don't have that idea going in. I think you have an idea of if it's a special script, if it sort of resonates with you and you feel passionate about it, yeah. But as a as to, to know what its future is going to happen, no, no, because think about all the elements that have to come into play, oh, wow. all the pieces, all the pieces that have to go into position for it to even you know stay around as this long. So a lot of things have gone into position for this to happen, and no, you can't can't even hire people to do that. <laughs> okay, then so then you make the movie, and all of a sudden, I mean, you were always beautiful. But now you're probably like getting recognized on the street. Like, how was that? Like, I'm sure like you had little boys and probably little girls. I don't know. You could have had, like little girls, but for sure you have little boys chasing you like everywhere and young young adult men and like men in their 20s and stuff. How was that becoming like an overnight like sex symbol? You know, in the 80s. No, in the 80s we did not have internet, so. That wasn't happening. I think now when people, when that happens to people now, they, you know, you have the internet, you have Facebook, you have Twitter, you have Instagram, you have Tumblr, you have all those social mediums. So back then all you had, you didn't even have cell phones then. Remember, we just had just, you know, the phone phone. Oh, that's right. I guess that's right. <laughs> it was, and it was a big deal that it was a dial at one point. Remember, it was touch tone. And yeah. Was <laughs> that was the future when that happened. So no, I mean, I would hear about it. Maybe if my agent caught wind of something in a, in a meeting or maybe someone had called up to the phone or, no, so I was not privy to information like that. It was not around me. But I bet when you worked with my buddy, Tony Curtis, it was totally different. Oh. Because I love Tony. He's my favorite, favorite celebrity. What a lovely, And I miss him. Man. I miss him. Ron used to have a television show called Set the Record Straight. It was on Time Warner Cable in California where he interviewed like all the legends of Hollywood and Tony Curtis was one of his friends and someone that he interviewed. Plus everywhere we go people always tell him he looks like Tony Curtis. He doesn't we, have his hair done that way today, but which, wait, no my hair's wow, which is very flattering. I've had it all my life. My vo husky voice and my New York accent. Tony yeah. Curtis was I love him so and much. And he must have loved you because he was like oh, all yeah. about the woman. And Women. there's no seriousness. <laughs> when you work, work on a film with Tony, you're not going to get a, a quiet set. <laughs> no, I came on set and I visited the day he was shooting us. I kind of think it was the, a theater, some kind of a theater shot. I just came in and said hello and I got to meet him and that was it. I didn't have any... Oh, uh, you didn't know him what, better? No, I didn't get to know him, know him I bet I, got, I got, did get to meet him and he's extremely charming. <laughs> yes. <laughs> John, that. he's crazy and funny. That was, wait, wait, we should tell him. That was Lobster, Lobster Man from Mars, right? Lobster Man from Mars, yes. Mm -hmm. I have that a... Was, well, he must that was that epic. Type. It was one of those epic ones I, I did. <laughs> talking to him about that film. It came out in the 80s. Yeah, but, you know, yeah. you couldn't possibly uh, get Tony <laughs> to talk about anything long enough. Tony would just go on and on and go from one subject to another subject with all humor. He was the original stand-up comic. He had that wonderful uh, New York Jewish humor, which only Jewish people from New York have. Nobody else has it. You can't be from Jersey <laughs> or Chicago. You got to be from the Bronx or the Brook or Brooklyn, like where I'm from. He had, no matter what you said, he came back with a sentence that was hilarious. I mean, I loved the man. Loved him. Uh, we were supposed to do a big, big interview. And he said, Ron, I'm going to London to do the book review because he had just written a book. And he fell ill in, in, in England. And then I was going to Vegas. I spoke with his wife, and I was going to go to Vegas to see him, but he passed away. And it was a great loss because I never got the stories that Tony Curtis had on film. Oh. It would have been a documentary. I mean, what he said about Marilyn Monroe and all the stars. 
you could, I, I laugh in retrospect thinking back. So, so, so with you, because you've, had, you've worked with a lot of great people, and I even looked, saw on IMDb, you have a film that says you're rumored to be in. I don't know if you can tell us if you're in it or not, but it's got a lot of people that have been on our show before. I forgot the name of it now. I didn't write it down since it said rumored. But anyway, you should check your IMDb and see if you're actually going to be in the film that you're rumored to be in. <laughs> Yeah, I am. It's called Survivor. Yes. Okay. It's got. Yeah. It's got fun it's people. A, it's a. It's all the final girls that were final girls from the '80s until now. Now, pretty much. So it's going to be a horror film, but it's going to be all the like myself and I think you saw the other ladies listed. Uh, a script is in the works. William Butler is behind it, who's a wonderful man, and um, we'll see what happens. Oh. I, I'm rumored, and that's all it is right now is a rumor. Okay. Well, so because I'm a big hor- how do you say horror? Horror. Horror. Okay, I'm a big horror, horror. movie fan. Um, I'm a huge horror fan. And you are like a horror icon because you've got some of the like coolest horror movies. I want to just anybody who doesn't like know what she's been in. You've got Waxwork. You've got April Fool's Day, which is like I mean that's like a, such a classic. You can't even. It's our it's our 30 year uh, anniversary this year. Oh, that's awesome. And then you've got Grizzly too, which uh, those Grizzly movies actually were not very good, but just the fact that you were in one is like it's cool that now looking back on it and when you did it, it was probably good, but. When it came out, it might have been more like one of those movies that wasn't as good as your all your other ones. <laughs> I don't think it was released. We went to Budapest and we shot it with John Reese Davies and Stephen Wood and Deborah Raffin. Remember Deborah Raffin? Yep, absolutely. Um, and we shot it there. I was there for two months, and it was they never got anything. Oh, you know, it's been bootlegged then because I've actually I saw it, so I've seen the bootleg copy, which I don't know if it has everything good in it or not. But then you also did Real Genius, My Chauffeur, which are not horror movies. My Chauffeur, by the way, is such a fabulous movie, and I love the fact that you're, like, in a movie with Sam Jones. I've been tweeting with him trying to get him on the show. I've been tweeting with him trying to get him on the show. I love Sam Jones. I love him, The fact that he was in the Ted movies I thought was hilarious. Right. And um, so that's a really cool one. So out of all your bodies of work, do you have certain ones that you thought were the most – either the most fun or you liked them the most or – you know, something of that vein, because you've been in so many great ones. I think uh, the, you just mentioned it. My chauffeur is my favorite, because Sam Jones is just a lovely man. I had so much fun with him. And, and there was also, because we had such great chemistry and connection, um, we were both able to just let it go at night and then come back and, and be that same sort of magical couple. We didn't hang on to it. So it was a, I felt free with him. I felt super free that I can love him madly and, and know that it was just acting. <laughs> it was, he had a really neat thing about him. I loved him. And also, I'm still friends with Stephen Wolf, who was our line producer on that. And um, so some good some good relationships came out of that film that I really love those people. And did you, everybody did, loves it. Did you know that when Deborah Raffin came out, they said she was the new Grace Kelly? Yes. I never really thought so, but she's quite beautiful. But there will never be a beauty in the world like Grace Kelly when it comes to blue-eyed blondes. She's got the title, as far as I'm concerned, as the most beautiful blue-eyed blonde woman. What do you think about Grace? Did you ever meet her? Grace Kelly? Yeah. I don't. Was she was she still around in the 80s? She died in a car wreck in France. She was the the princess. Was she alive in the 80s? Jesus, when did Grace die? My mind just went blank. (laughs) Well, why he's thinking about well, it? Well, I, I think. I, think I, met her. Look, I, I, I don't. I never I met her. No. If she was supposed to replace Grace Kelly, what she died in '82. She what died in '82. So no. Grace that's, died in '82. That's, that's, that's three deaths. Okay, I wasn't even in Hollywood. I, I, I graduated high school in '80, and I literally just in '81. No, it was '80 that I came out to California. Uh, uh, with Wilhelmina, I, w- I signed with Wilhelmina in, in 1980. So I was 17. That's so. So cool. I was in Texas prior to that. That's so right. cool. So well, I, I anybody this- know what happened to Deborah? She's not around. She doesn't work. I think Deborah passed. Raffin? Yeah, she passed. I think maybe you want someone to check, but I think she did pass. That's a shame. She was a beautiful girl. So I like to do this thing where I like get to brag for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I made a list. I made a list of some of the people that you've been able to work with, and obviously I didn't make a list of everybody. But I made a list of 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 people that everybody basically knows who they are, and it's just a cool. I, I it's just something I like to do. Uh, okay. Uh, for my ego and for yours, because like you 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 might not even remember working with somebody. And I people. like to know how many people are friends of mine that you've worked with. Yeah, he's worked. Oh, okay. with 
Tony's okay. one. Tony's uh, one. Actually, well, first of all, Barbie Wilde is one of is it was in one of your movies, and although she's not a huge star, she's a great horror <laughs> star, and she's from the Hellraiser series, and she's in one of your movies that's been on our show because she's a friend okay. of mine, as as well as E.G. Daly. But then we have John Travolta, Val Kilmer, Jill Clayburgh, which I'm dancing as fast as I can is a great movie. Jill, I knew. Right. I knew Jill Clayburgh. Diane Weist, Joe Pesci, Laura Dern, yes. George yes. Clooney. And I thought this is so funny because, like, you're the top bill in, in whatever movie George Clooney was in, and he's, like, almost down at the bottom with the extras. But I just that I was like, That was the Grizzly movie. That was the Grizzly movie. was the Grizzly movie. movie. Okay. Uh, yeah. Nicholas Cage, Zach Galligan, who he's coming on the show. Anthony Perk. Oh, you're going to love Zach. You're going to love Zach. I so love he's... Zach Galligan. He's so cool. Anthony he is. Let's talk about Anthony Perkins. Oh, okay. I met Anthony Perkins in 19, maybe 58, 59, in a gay bar out on eastern Long Island called the Red Door. She might not know, too. We're married. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> We're the only syndicated radio show right. with millions of listeners. We're actually a married and, couple. And, and, oh, I didn't well, know that was I couldn't enough. believe it was <laughs> I couldn't believe it was Tony Curtis, but they were shooting a movie out Anthony there. Anthony Perkins. Anthony Perkins. They were shooting a movie out there. And he had on uh, sneakers, a black tight slacks, and a black turtleneck long sleeve shirt. And he was wrapped like a pretzel around the bar stool. And he looked crazy as a loon. I remember standing there and saying to myself, should I even attempt to speak to him or not? What's the point, Ron? What are you going to talk to him for? He's going to think you're trying to hustle him for a part in a movie, which I would have. <laughs> I went over to him and I said, listen, I, and I remember the dialogue pretty well. I said, this is like, you're not going to like it. I'm going to come over and talk to you, tell you who I am. And you're going to say, you know, you're going to want to say, get the fuck out of here. But you're not going to say it because you're going to be polite and you're going to put yourself through it. And he just started to laugh. <laughs> and he said, no, I'm not going to do any of those things. He said, now, what's your name? You know who I am. Who are you? I said, I'm probably one of the greatest actors in the world just not discovered yet. And he said, of, you know, <laughs> of course, he said, he said, everybody is. I said, no, no, not everybody. Most people stink. I'm good. And then, <laughs> and then we just chatted, and then it went into just crazy talk about politics of the day, which were about uh, Kennedy uh, running for office. And uh, he then left. And I did say to him, what are you doing at a gay bar? He said, oh, I like gay people. I like to be around gay people, never knowing exactly that he was gay. Now, Tab Hunter, I'm in a movie with, called That Kind of Woman with Sophia Loren and Tab. And Tab Hunter, I know, is gay as a lark. Now I find out that Tab Hunter and Tony Perkins are lovers at that period. <laughs> so I didn't want to say to Tab Hunter, I, I ran into your boyfriend in a gay bar in Long Island. <laughs> He was carousing. <laughs> I, I know Tab. Tab and I are friends to date because he was on my show. I interviewed him a lot of times, and I did tell him that. And he said, yeah, we had a, a kind of an open relationship. Listen, All right, so wait, we're going to keep bragging. So we got Anthony Perkins. Let me go Gina Gershon, um, Ed Lauder. I love Ed Lauder. He used to freak me out, but, like, he's got, like, such great, like, movies that he, like, Young Blood and, like, uh, what's the longest yard? I don't know. He's got such great movies. Like, and I noticed he's on Twitter now. He's fabulous. Adam Baldwin. That's from 315, I think, right? Which is like a yep. great movie. Great movie. Great like <laughs> kids bully, gangy, fighty movie. Uh, uh -huh. Mario, Mario Van Peebles is in that. Yes, movie. Mario Van Peebles. E. G. He was on the list. E. G. Marshall. I wrote Sam Jones. Yep. We already talked about it. I think I said Val Kilmer. Then we got Ari Gross, Kelly Preston, yep. James Keach, Tony Curtis, which we mentioned. David Carradine, Bruce Campbell, and Keith David. That's where I stopped. I know there's about another 200. Bruce Campbell. It's great. Oh, I've awesome. met. I met. I, I met him. I, I was. Uh, I was on an episode of Burn Notice, and like I got. So I got to meet him on Burn Notice, and he was a really nice guy. He is nice. He's a nice. guy. And he man. does a he lot is. of conventions and stuff with the autograph signings, and I used to go to those all the time because I used to be a celebrity clothing designer, and I would dress them all. I would give them free clothes so they would like wear my stuff, and I could have pictures and stuff. Do you do? Do you do conventions? Uh, with 80s in the sand, I'm exclusive. Okay. Oh, good for you. So I, I'm not going to be doing conventions until 80s in the sand is not around. I know that the, the promoter of 80s in the sand wants this to be a, a yearly thing from here on out. There you go. So uh, so let's go to 80s in the sand real quick and let's tell everybody what it is because I know I saw a post on Twitter that it's it's next year and you have a lot of time to pay for it. So tell everybody what, what it is and how, they, how do they uh, sign up to go and tell them what they're going to. Okay, so 80s in the Sand is a 
wow, <laughs> it's huge, is what it is. <laughs> it's an authentic 80s experience, music and movies and more. And we have uh, 80s hosts who are Richard Blade, Nina Blackwood, downtown Julie Brown. We oh, have kidding. So, Julie so far. Brown. She uh -huh. me on Twitter. She's oh fabulous. My God. I haven't seen Julie in it. She's still bouncing that crazy bitch. She's not serious. Yeah, so she's awesome. Her. Doing wonderful. I just actually met her first at, for the first time in person a couple weeks ago. I met her about 30, 40 years ago. And then um, uh, actors, so far, these are the actors, Anthony Michael Hall, myself, Deborah Foreman, and Diane Franklin. Now, we do have more that we will be announcing. They're just going to, they're holding off a little bit. Anthony and then the Michael lead up, fabulous we've had him on the show and like he's worn a bunch of my clothes he's one of the celebrities that i gave clothes to so i could like get pictures of him wearing my stuff he's the coolest guy and and 16 candles and breakfast club are like two of the like greatest 80s movies like ever made <laughs> right right I, I agree with that i agree with that so uh he's gonna be there then our lineup our music lineup so far is lover boy Fantastic. starship uh featuring mickey thomas uh, we have Howard Jones, we have Winger, we have um, Jody Watley, Shalimar Reloaded, we have The Motels, The Smithereens, New Shoes, Stacey Q, we have, who am I missing? I know I'm missing someone. We're going, and, to, we're going to see Stacey Q Saturday night here in Pennsylvania at a freestyle explosion. Um, you have to say hello? You guys should try to get Expose. I'm really good friends with Expose. We're going to see them Saturday. That's why we're going to the freestyle explosion. But Expose is fantastic. I don't know. Do you know who Expose is? No. Say, say some songs. Uh, what songs? Point of No Return. Um, oh, when that I, can't, I can't think. They had the theme song. Uh, they, they had the theme jo song Joy for Free Bruno. Willy. Joy uh, Bruno is the best they had the singer. No, they had, they're the number one selling girl group of all time up until Destiny's Child. They sold like, you know, they have like eight number one hits. Um, you would know them. It's Point of No Return, Exposed to Love. Um, anyway, write down the expose and just like look them up. Cause Ex I can, expose, okay. I can give you contact if you want them. And we've had new shoes on the show, and Shalimar Reloaded is on our on the record label that I work for. And oh, cool. um, uh, Stacy Q, we're gonna see Saturday. Noel has been on the show. He's like one of those '80s guys who did Silent Morning. And Winger, I think, follows me on Twitter. I mean, that's a great line. That's a great lineup. So so people are going to go. It's like a three-day weekend, or how long does this this, this Okay, event? so it is. It's going to take place in Punta Cana, Dominican Republic, at the Breathless Resort and Spa on November 11th through the 18th, uh, 2017. So it's going to be five days. Uh, yeah, actually, it's going to be seven nights uh, you're, that you're there. But the concerts are five days and uh, four nights. You know, five nights and four days of concerts, and then they're going to be putting, you know, the movies in there, too. I think Valley Girl is opening it on a Saturday night. Yay! We're going to do Q&A, and uh, Valley Girl, and then we're going to go to the party. So that's going to open up the 80s in the sand party at Montana! Ah! I can't even believe that that's going to happen. I can't wait to go. Can't wait. I'm packed already. <laughs> How do people get tickets for this? Where do they go? They go to 80sinthesand.com. It's an it's like an 80s in the yes. com. Okay. Sam.com. And they have two different phone numbers, too, because right now we're doing a promotional where you can get uh, 12 months to pay. So right now that is a specific promotional for this month. Next, uh, next they're going to add another promotional on top of that one. But if you want, like, specifics, you can just call them on the phone and they'll... They'll do they'll, they're, it, the people that are working at 80s in the sand are really accommodating, really accommodating. So are you are you are you banging the table every time you talk? <laughs> oh, now you disappeared. There you go. Oh no, it's not. You were going down like this, and I heard a little thump every time. I just didn't want the thump to come through. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stop my thumping. <laughs> And I'm excited. I can see your passion for it. So every, you can follow Deborah Foreman on Twitter because I know she's got a link to 80s in the Sand. I'm pretty sure on her Twitter. And it's at Deborah Foreman. But you spell Deborah, D-E-B-O-R-A-H, and then Foreman is F-O-R-E-M-A-N. So follow her on Twitter and you can get more information. Doesn't Deborah Carr spell, Carr spell her name Deborah the same way? Yes. Deborah uh, I think so. I think so. Yeah. Okay. I love her. Then you have a jewelry yeah. line. Jewelry Run's on hold right now because I'm so busy with 80s in the Sand. Not only am I the celebrity guest, but I also made the website, and I'm their social marketer. So I'm so busy right now that I put my jewelry on hold. It's I'm looking at it right now. It's still there, 
It's just on hold temporarily. Okay. I am still making my website. So, yes, you know, when people want websites, I'm still available to do that right now. Where do they go for that? Do they go to Deborah, Deborah Foreman.net. Okay, Deborah Foreman.net, you guys, is her Twitter. And her, I mean, uh, Deborah Foreman.net is her website. At Deborah Foreman is her Twitter. And she's young and beautiful. I, 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 I love how you've kept your, your fabulous looks. People are just dying. Even in the chat room, they're talking about, like, you know, like they'll marry you and all kinds of stuff. There's tons. Ah! Of stuff. Yeah. So at this point, I don't think so. <laughs> the stage in life. Hey, you never Mar know. Marriage is something you do when you're hot, young, and stupid. <laughs> you're saying that, but we got married four years ago, and neither one of us well are I'm young. young. I'm young, hot, hot, and stupid. <laughs> I got married because it's the thing to do. You know, I'm Not still, that he actually I'm likes me old fashioned. <laughs> yes, he's old fashioned. I really married him for his money. This way, if he dies, I get all his money. <laughs> Listen to him. I mean, if you saw that the zeros in his bank book, and they're all zeros. Yeah, they're all zeros. Like zero. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to say, can I marry you too? <laughs> To me, he said he was worth forty-four million dollars, and I thought, okay, this is worth the chance. Yeah. And then I read him, he said, you know, I really wasn't telling you the truth. I've got forty-four cents. <laughs> That's not true. I met him, and I fell in love with him because he's a wonderful person, and I had a very, I had a forty-three-year relationship, so I'm a marrying guy. And my partner then died of uh, pancreatic cancer, and it took me a long time to find Jimmy, and I was particular. And I said, I've had the best, and I'm not settling for some whack job jerk off. And I got the best. And that's what she would do, I'm sure. I'm sure. Absolutely. I'm sure. But I think she's so self contained in a fabulous place that she doesn't want to take a chance and, and, she's and pollute it. She's going to be really cool and at pollute 80s it, the, right? She's going to go to 80s in the Sand and she's going to meet some fabulous. Uh, no, she doesn't need to be. You know, person. sometimes. Just a date. I don't need to get married. A partner, just a date. Sometimes a partner can pollute what you've created. Am I right? Yes. Or bring joy. But mostly, you know, you never know. She's yeah. perfect right now. She's got all these things going. She's working. She's So busy. when you, wait, wait, did, when you did all these movies, did you, like, when you were in your late teens, did you have, like, a boyfriend? Like, that, like, couldn't stand the fact that, like, every guy on the planet wanted to, like, meet you and kiss you? <laughs> I was a late bloomer. I didn't really have a boyfriend. Like, a boyfriend, boyfriend until I was 24, turning 25. Okay. Yeah. That's smart. She was not a desperate woman. Oh, no. desperately seeking a husband before she. No, I'm not. <laughs> Twenty one. Yes. They call her an old maid. Desperately seeking. You know, my joke is that I'm a spinster. I'm a hot spinster that wears sensible shoes, and I have two fur babies. <laughs> you have. Two, you have. Two, you have two dogs. I have a. I have a cat and a dog. Oh, a cat and a dog. Okay. Well, what kind of dog is he? She is a rescue. I got her from yeah, the yeah, yeah. Oh, Ours are all, we all have two, two rescues. Dogs are rescues. Yeah, I got her from the MiracleDogRescue.org, and she's. I love her. I, I, I actually saw her in a photograph, and I, I knew she was mine, so I just called up and I got her. That's that so. It. That's fabulous. Don't, don't we you love that. don't you feel that rescue dogs give greater love than purchased dogs? Our yes. dogs are so so loving. We have two dogs. Do oh. oh, hello, doggy. What's his name? I have to show you my brandy. My name is Jade. Um, rescue dogs do this thing, and I noticed that all of them do it, but they, they actually hold on to you. It's really bizarre. Yeah. And I, it was pointed out to me by this woman who was holding my dog. She goes, see what she's doing? And I said, yeah. She goes, all these rescue dogs, they always do that. I'm like, oh, my gosh, that's so sweet. We love it. We, have, we got Shazam at the Big Dog Rescue Ranch, and he's like 130-something pounds. Like He's a really big dog. Um, wow. and he's a Brazilian Mastiff and then this is our newest one we got in March of this year and her name is Brandy and she, hi Brandy say hi say hi to the beautiful Deborah and now how could anyone abuse and throw this in the street to roam the streets and she caught um, heartworm and yeah, she's, she's being, being treated she's still being for treated for now. heartworm and wow. Thursday we get the results that the, the worms are dead and she's fine and if not, I'll kill myself. <laughs> no, I won't be here the following. If, if Isn't she dog... cute though? I, I think I think it's so great that you rescued a dog. Where did you rescue her from again? MiracleDogRescue.org. There you guys go. So if you need a dog, there's another place besides the Big Dog Rescue Ranch that we went to that you could like. All the dogs need love and care, and 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 I, I believe that you get good things when you when you rescue oh, a dog. Absolutely, anytime and it like pays you, save, you back. Anytime you save a life, you 
get good luck. If you take a life, you can pass the test. She's beautiful. We love her. And she's a good girl. And she loves to sit up here on the TV show. <laughs> she's, We're she's, playing videos on YouTube, and she'll watch herself on the screen. <laughs> Look at her. Oh, I love it. Hi. She's an old, old she can hear me. terrier. Yeah, she's a, like an old English sheepdog and terrier, terrier mix. She's Sweet. Well, okay, so we got to start to wrap up with, with, with okay. the doggy. So, so first of all, everybody, follow Deborah Foreman on Twitter. It's at Deborah Foreman, D-E-B-O-R-A-H-F-O-R-E-M-A-N. Check out her website, DebraForeman.net. Um, definitely we want everybody to go and, and uh, go to 80sinthesand.com, especially like all of uh, all of you like 30 to like 60-year-olds who that was such an important time in life. You will love it. Everybody there you'll know, and it's going to be a lot of fun. And just to, so you know, anytime you add at Dr. Jimmy Starr and a tweet to promote it, I'll like send it out to my million people. Um, oh, uh, so anything I can do to help to help promote it. And uh, we want to thank you for coming on the show. I'm so happy that you, like, age so fabulously and you look so gorgeous and you've had such a great career. And we look forward to anytime you have anything you want to promote, let us know. We'll, we'll bring you back. And not to push something, but if you maintain that fabulous, youthful everything, I want you to go and look at DMK, cosme not cosmetics, it's process. My friend, Danae Montague King, he's rising now. Okay. Number one people uh, with creams and treatments that really work to maintain the moisture and get rid of wrinkles. Plus, he's got some other crap that they shoot in you or something, yeah, and it don't, stops don't you do the shooting stuff. from aging. <laughs> I've been using his it's products DMK for years. International, I think. I've been Google using it. his products Google, for years. And also Google Expose. Google Expose and see what Because Expose, you'll know every song. They're, like, so fabulous. And they have the ballad from the Free Willy soundtrack that was a number one hit. They have a lot of great hits, and, and I, I can, like, you know, put you in contact with them directly since... Because you I gotta to work at day. staying young looking. It doesn't happen, you know, doesn't come naturally. It does come. Look how no, 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 but let it... Listen. Do you work out a lot? Every day. Okay. She's she's in her early fifties. When she gets to be my age, at seventy six, you could wake up one morning and look like you know Norma Desmond or somebody else, or a mummy. It huh? happens overnight. You know, I was very good friends with my best friend was Jane Russell, the movie star. Okay, and Jane stayed at my house millions of times. In the morning, she'd wake up, and I'd look at her. I'd say, Russell, what the hell do you do to look so great? 89 years old, she wow. woke up looking like a young woman. And it was wow. because she took a million of uh, vitamin pills and stuff. She died from a heart yeah. thing. If it wasn't for her heart, she'd have been alive today. But she maintained it. She exercised. Also, she had her makeup tattooed on. Did you know that? Oh, you didn't know, Jane. You weren't I around. Know, I wasn't around. Yeah, then. she had her eye makeup tattooed and her lipstick. But she was gorgeous. 80, anyway. 89. Okay, so hold on. One more time. All right, everybody. Okay. We want to thank Deborah Foreman for coming on the show. Please Deborah, follow her on. Wait, where are you? Where do you live? Uh, Big Bear Lake. Oh, you're kidding. We go, <laughs> we're, we're moving back to California. Yeah, we're moving to Palm Springs. And we go up to Big Bear Oh, my gosh, you're moving to Palm Springs. Yeah, yes. you're, you're going to be close. Yes. you got to come down and visit us. We'll visit you. I'm looking up in Big Bear for a winter house. Okay. Well, let, get in touch with me, and I'm happy to help you out. Yeah, because the real estate is not big up there. Sure. Right. Oh, my gosh. You're going to get something exquisite if you start shopping right now. Yes. I mean, if you pick, go for 300000 you can get a great house. You could get a gorgeous place. For so, you, know, you know what the problem is? Jimmy what? doesn't like the ride up. He's terrified of those cliffy roads. Do you go down a lot? If you – no, I don't. But if you go the back way, it's not as windy. It yep. is windy. I've heard that from a lot of people. They get sick. They get but sick. The back way is how I go. I go up and down through Palm Springs. Yeah, in the back way, it's easier because it's you're not going to get as sick and it's not as windy. It's beautiful. The back way is prettier, actually. So I'd you love to live in Big Bear more than Palm Springs. Do Palm you have, Springs do you too have, hot. Do you have um, like stores and stuff up there? Or do you no, have to no, go no. She shoots animals and she. No, no, no. Where's the other place she, we went? She sews her own where's clothes. Where's the other place that we she, went? <laughs> I don't know. Where's the other place? I yes, my bathroom. We went without... to, uh, no, we went to Idlewild, and uh, there's a grocery store and an ice cream shop. Like you can't live in Idlewild without having to go downtown, all, go down the mountain. We have Kmart, and we have Vaughn's, and we have big Steak and Dresses. We have Big Five. Okay. Have... Big Bear is huge. Okay. I haven't. I have to go and see. Okay. It's big. I looked at. Listen, when I lived in Palm Springs, I was looking for a winter house because I couldn't deal with the summers. To be why quite did you frank. wait? Why did you pick Big Bear out of all the places? 
There has been a family love since uh, uh, I was in my early 20s, and we used to come up here for holidays. And then my mom uh, bought a house 10 years ago up here, uh, and we were coming up here every single weekend. And then five years ago, I just decided I'm just going to move up here. So then everyone moved up here. My brother, my mom, my niece, my uncle, and my sister. Oh, it's, it's, clean, it's clean air, magnificently beautiful. Um, seasons, right? You beautiful, get all the seasons. Beautifully priced. You can get a beautiful house that's not an arm and a leg. And yeah. it's, it, the people and are the great. The Wi-Fi works good because we're not having any problems with your connection. Really, you know, the people are really out. friendly that live there. Uh, Mammoth bought out Summit and Bear Mountain. So Mammoth now owns both of our big uh, resorts. And since then, we've we've become even more popular up here. <laughs> so and you better get here now. <laughs> well, look, okay, we will you, check wait, it out. And you have Lake Arrowhead not far. Eight people up here. <laughs> yeah, it's really great. Okay. We're, we're going to see you. We're going to call you. Seriously, when we come up to Big Bear. And if you come down to Palm Springs, call us. I will. I will. You guys are great. We'd love to see you. We'd love to see you. Okay, Anyway, everybody. Deborah, beautiful young girl. It was nice. Thank you for thank coming you so on much. our Anytime show. Anytime you want to promote anything, let us know. We'll bring you back. Everybody, Deborah Foreman, thank you so much. Bye now. Bye. 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 I'm telling you, we she make more nice. we make more friends on this show because we've got the sweetest people on our show.